Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about a few mushrooms today, but starting with this really unusual edible mushroom, it's a polypore. And you'll often see this discussed alongside different species of chicken of the woods mushrooms. And uh, that is the Latiparous genus. And they're these shelving mushrooms that occur uh, sort of worldwide and they're really common in the southeastern US. Uh, and this is a mushroom that used to be sort of clustered in with the same genus, even though it has some really radically different, not only visible, but uh, genetic differences. So uh, you can hear this mushroom referred to commonly as the white chicken of the woods. That is the common name in iNaturalist, which is a really good place to keep track of and look at uh, other people's observations and photographs of interesting and unusual organisms. But I am not sure I can call it that because there is a very common white poured chicken of the woods mushroom, Latiparus cincinnatus, that grows just all over the place where I live. And so uh, the common name white poured chicken of the woods is often applied to that one. And this one is uh, white chicken of the woods, according to iNaturalist. So this is a great example where common names start to be really kludgy and clumsy. This used to be in, as I said, the same genus as your chicken of the woods mushrooms, but it is now in its own genus called Burkirtia. So this is Burkirtia persicana, and uh, the persicana is in reference to the color peach. And Burkirtia, I don't know what the provenance of that genus name is, uh, but you know, you can see this mushroom is a very uh, sort of beautiful dark brown, like a combination of light and darker umber colors here. Uh, and then it has, if you look closely, a little bit of sort of pinkiness. And so, uh, you know, the, the last name it was under was uh, Latiparus uh, persicinus, I believe. And so it had a similar sort of root related to peach because you have this slight peachy thing going on. Again, going back to Latiparus cincinnatus, the white poor chicken of the woods, it is a white poor chicken of the woods that has very bright peachy orange colors. So like if you put that mushroom side by side with this one, you, there's no way you would tell them apart. But if you're discussing them or well, I guess when I'm discussing them, I'm going to call this Burkirtia and say it's the dark brown thing that has a porous undersurface that I can treat culinarily like an, a chicken of the woods. All right. So so let's talk about the identification features here. I've already kind of covered some of them, but first of all, it has really nice pliable fre uh, flesh when it's fresh. As it matures, that can kind of get tough and rough and you don't want to consume it at that point, but this one is in really good condition. So it's nice and squishy. The soft uh, tissue here, it's not really hairy, but it is a little bit on the uh, sort of soft side. You can't really call it furry, I would say, but uh, oftentimes Sometimes chicken of the woods is sort of like uh, really contorted and rumply and very smooth on top. And this almost has a little bit of soft tackiness uh, by way of comparison. Similar to your Latiparous chicken of the woods mushroom species, it has concentric growth zones on the fruiting body. They're obviously a lot less conspicuous because of the coloration of this mushroom. And this uh, particular specimen is a really good example of what they look like when they're in their sort of uh, best maturity before they start to turn tough and you can't eat them. Most notably, and what makes this mushroom really conspicuous uh, in terms of <laughs> what it is compared to other things, and this one's not like, even though it's unusual and it has these weird tax taxonomy naming things going on, it's highly recognizable. So I'd put this on a like a novices list Chicken of the Woods is a really good place to start. And this one, if you run across it, it's less common, but it's really recognizable. So uh, the last thing, again, is this really very radical brown staining reaction. And that's not something you see in other Chicken of the Woods mushrooms. There's a lot of other uh, mushrooms that have like staining, browning reactions. But if you put it all together, it's like it's a polyporous thing. Oftentimes, well, it'll be growing at the base of a tree. That's where this one was. Uh, it has often, not always, sort of a stumpy uh, stem here and uh, a nice creamy porous undersurface that again as soon as you start to handle it it turns blackish and so uh, I'm going to try to make myself a Burkirtia persicana 
a pot pie with this. And so how I'm going to, I will, I will butcher it while uh, we're in, while we're here together. So uh, basically when I am harvesting these kinds of mushrooms and most notably also that uh, white poured chicken of the woods mushroom, Latipera cincinnatus, it is a, a varied sort of tastiness depending on where it is uh, nice and uh, tender in the fruiting body. And so what I tend to do is uh, cut along these concentric growth zones a little bit where I see and feel that the mushroom is nice and squishy. And in the case of, uh, again, Latipera cincinnatus, I'm very, very conscientious of uh, the mushroom being like um, more styrofoamy because it takes on pretty unpleasant flavors at that point. But as you can see, I you know, took a nice little slice and you have this uh, beautiful undersurface. And uh, so that is, you know, I'd have to take a strip off of it and just continue to do that. And yeah, I'm actually in this case only going to take sort of the outer layer here uh, because once I start to get in here, it's getting a little tougher and I'm going to leave it for the bugs. So uh, that is Burkirtia persicana, formerly known as Latiparus persicanus, sometimes referred to as the white chicken of the woods mushroom, but different from the white poured chicken of the wood, woods mushroom, which is orange peach, unlike the brown peach of this mushroom. I think that is uh, a really good example, again, of how fun mycology can be, but it's like a Rube Goldberg. If you start to get into the words and the word roots, uh, it is very helpful for identification. Like when I figured out that uh, persicana and persicanus was a reference to the color peach, I was like, okay, I can dial that in. It's a little bit easier. Of course, sometimes it's like peach is really variable because you have other colors. Sometimes you have, uh, you know, mushroom names that are like two colors jammed together. I'm going to have a sip of water and then let's talk about deadly poisonous uh, destroying angel amanita mushrooms. All right, so if you are new to mushroom hunting or mushroom bothering, uh, I highly recommend getting to know the Amanita genus. And this is something that it's not just me, it's everybody really. And it is both a safety thing, but it's also a really great learning opportunity to get to know mushrooms overall and their sort of mushroom format if you're interested in iconic mushrooms. So I'm holding uh, a, a destroying angel mushroom. It is highly toxic, could be deadly. And it really doesn't take very much of the fruiting body to have really bad adverse reactions, especially uh, extreme liver damage, but also uh, add on kidney damage. Although the survival rate with uh, intensive care is very high, you just don't want to mess with these mushrooms. And it's interesting too, because it's like, let's have the Amanita talk and people get really grave and solemn and they worry and they, uh, you know, hear death cap and destroying angel and they get very alarmed and even more alarmed if their child is the one who's getting into mushroom hunting. Hi, mom and dad still alive after 16 years of this hobby. Uh, but you know, there really aren't that many mushrooms that are dangerous like this one. So the vast majority of them are harmless. They may be like terrible to eat or maybe give you a bad belly ache, but uh, you know, the Amanita genus and then a few uh, dainty brown mushrooms in the Gallerina genus have these amatoxins in them. So they, you know, amatoxin is derived from the word Amanita and uh, it's just, you know, no good. The, the human body and amatoxin is really just not a good combination. So uh, you want to get to know these mushrooms more or less. And when I say more or less, uh, there are a lot of different destroying angel species. And unless you are uh, an expert who uses microscopy or a lot of people do DNA analysis on our different Amanita mushrooms, if you're like me and you just sort of enjoy observing mushrooms in the field, I can get to a place where I'm like, that is a destroying angel mushroom. And I have a number of species that I'm pretty confident confident with. So I would, with, you know, medium confidence, call this Amanita bisporigera. And uh, it is sort of the iconic destroying angel of the eastern United States. There is another one out west. It is Amanita ocreata, I believe. But Amanita bisporigera is really, uh, shows all of the features of um, the Amanita genus that are interesting, but also is just this, like, gloriously distinct white fruiting body. 
body. Okay, so let's go over it. First of all, I've been showing you these white gills here. They're tightly packed. And in the case of most Amanita mushrooms, the gills are white. And that is one of the reasons that like, again, if you're a beginner, white gilled mushrooms can be an area to avoid for a while, just for the sake of safety. And the reason for that is like avoiding Amanitas as a genus altogether. So you have these white, beautiful, tightly packed gills. And then you also have this white uh, ring on the stem. Another uh, thing to note is a lot of Amanita mushrooms and other mushrooms have uh, this partial veil ring on the stem, but in the case of your destroying angel mushrooms, it's very uh, membranous and so it like really uh, sticks around a little bit. Even though that tissue is very, very uh, thin, it tends to stay and stick and leave this really sort of nice non, uh, you know, the, a lot of these uh, partial veils, they can get very elaborate and very uh, powdery or, you know, not just powdery, but sometimes they look like flamenco skirts. This is sort of a nice pale, uh, but not all that uh, thick and what you would call membranous partial veil. All right, so the most important thing when you're looking at Amanita identification in general is what is going on at the base of the stem. And this is what you would call a, uh, a vulva. And so like when you're collecting mushrooms, you wanna collect the whole specimen. And in the case of Amanita, but also other mushrooms, but most notably Amanita, uh, the base of what you have going on, like what's happening at the base of the stem is really instrumental to getting a good ID. And so in this case, this is sort of a really like clubby, kludgy, unusual little uh, protective layer of tissue that clings to the base of the mushroom. And that's one of the things about Amanita by Sporogyra in particular, is it's sort of circular and uh, this tissue, this amin you know, this uh, uh, universal veil tissue, there we go, there's a little bit better focus. Okay, so as you can see, it's sort of like this rounded, clubby little thing. And then you have uh, a little bit of tissue that is sort of encapsulating the base and it's almost like stuck together which uh, you know can make these mushrooms a little bit weird and hard to identify but uh, you know if you look at the gestalt of it the uh, Amanita by Sporogyra and a lot of its relatives are these sort of beautiful and uh, lanky and stately mushrooms with a cup of tissue at the base and white gills membranous uh, uh, ring on the stem and then finally uh, the mushrooms that are uh, destroyed angels but also other dangerous mushrooms sort of in the same section of the genus are uh, unfeatured on their cap and when I say unfeatured I mean it is just smooth there are no warts there are no stripy striations there are no little bits of powder there's no gnomes living on top it's just this nice smooth surface oftentimes as it matures uh, this little nipple this little umbonate thing and as you can tell you know I am fearless about handling this mushroom like there is uh, a lot of terrible things that could happen to me if I consumed it even if it were cooked or frozen and boiled and you know sent into space and retrieved this mushroom could really mess me up but you know you have to eat it and digest it for that to actually be a problem so I'm waving it at you without uh, a care in the world and that is I think uh, one of the things that I love about mushroom bothering and when I say mushroom bothering as distinct from mushroom hunting I go out into the woods and I have you know, desire to find mushrooms that I can eat. But it's been very dry. Everything is really roasted except for, you know, this mushroom. And then I came across this sucker, which was really fun. And as you can see, this, uh, well, this white chicken of the woods is now white brown staining chicken of the woods. Uh, and so, you know, this is a real treat. But what I was here for and did not get to actualize are some chanterelle mushrooms. Uh, Cantharellus velutinus is the specific species name here. But as you can see, it's just like really dried out and, and it, that's kind of unfortunate. I will cut it open and I could take this home and eat it, but I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, and it also has bug damage inside. But like, this is what I came out here for. They're these little golden dudes and they grow uh, in oak groves and they have uh, these little sort of uh, false gills or, you know, forked and uh, 
they're easily removed, rub offable, uh, you know, uh, false gills are what they're called. So they're, you know, not those deep blade like things. They're actually just sort of attached to the stem and run down it a little bit. But, um, you know, this is a great example of a mushroom that is like, okay, I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to examine it. I'm going to show you, you know, this is a hit. Look at my pathetic chanterelle. But also look at this beautiful Burkirtia persicana and this beautiful destroying angel. Uh, so, you know, that is the fruits of my labor for the course of uh, morning and early afternoon. And I'm more than delighted with that. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful mushroom season and uh, I hope we get some rain. And in the meantime, find a billion mushrooms and we'll talk again soon.